Here at Bath, we're proud of the university's excellent reputation for learning and teaching, and the high level of academic achievement, intellectual curiosity, skills development, and employability of our students. However, much of the framework for our curricula and assessment was developed over 20 years ago. Since then, the university has grown, the sector has changed, and we're becoming outliers with overpopulated curricula, and in many cases, just too much assessment. So in order to maintain our success in learning and teaching, to remain at the forefront of the sector, and to continue to ensure that our students gain the best possible education, we need to change. With this in mind, we're embarking on an ambitious project to transform all of our undergraduate and postgraduate taught programmes over the next few years. As we redesign our programmes, we'll need to ask, what will a successful graduate from this degree programme look like? and then tailor our curricula and our assessment accordingly. Each program will be designed as a whole and will move away from fragmented micro-level modular learning to fewer, more in-depth and better coordinated units. We also have the opportunity to streamline assessment, to make it more meaningful to the overall program and reduce the workload burden felt by many staff and students, giving students more space in which to learn and staff more space in which to teach. We will also be able to incorporate more varied methods of delivery, such as blended learning and integrated assessment, as well as greater engagement with our own research. However, we'll be careful to retain the key elements that differentiate us from our competitors and have made us so successful over the last years, such as industrial engagement and placements. Taking this approach, will enable us to put well-being and inclusivity of both staff and students at the heart of our provision. We will be able to deliver an academic experience which addresses key issues of developing research, academic and professional skills, but also actively recognises, respects and celebrates the diversity of our students and staff and the world in which we live. Curriculum transformation, therefore, is not simply a process of changing credits, of combining modules or altering assessment. It really releases its potential when colleagues begin to talk, listen and share ideas and when students are engaged not in a tokenistic but in a meaningful way. This will empower us to approach our learning and teaching proactively, to engage in debates over design and content and to resist the temptation to simply do things the same way. This of course requires us to listen to each other and open ourselves to change. As I've said, as an institution we should retain the many aspects of learning and teaching that we do so well, but we should never shy away from the challenges of change, of embedding sustainability, global citizenship, student engagement, employability, skills development and inclusivity in our programmes. In short, this is an opportunity to future-proof the high quality of our learning and teaching through an inclusive process of change. Curriculum transformation is being led by the Centre for Learning and Teaching with support from associate deans and the academic registry. We are already working with several vanguard undergraduate and postgraduate programmes which are aiming to launch in September 2019 and which are providing valuable lessons and ideas which we are already sharing across the university. Clearly this is a major undertaking that will involve many if not most of our academic and professional services staff as well as our students. It's also a wonderful opportunity to make our teaching and assessment practices more efficient, more effective and more sustainable, and in the longer term to capture the imagination and inspire the next generation of students and staff, and to ensure that we remain at the forefront of learning and teaching. <laughs>